five. For the five, I got 1.34 or 1.3794. For the four, I got 1.7243. And Devon, you got six off? Same thing? And they just, they don't add up to the six. Point they should eight. add up to the 4.2529. Yeah. Yep. You get. You get. Okay. I was excited to just got but. You were trying to get it to add up to this, what, 6.25? Yeah. Yeah, that's 16, <laughs> and 12 of them went this way. Yeah, I realized my mistake right here. Okay. Okay. And do these two add up to that? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. All right, that's a fun little problem, uh, but don't worry, you can make it more complicated. This is the type of problem here, and part of me was hoping that you would go just two decimal places, and just to see that it messes up more if you go to two decimal places. Because each number begets another number, begets another number, begets another number, and rounding off too soon starts to compile, and by the time you get to the end, you, you're much farther off when yeah. you try to add them together. When I added those together, I was off by two ten thousandths. So about the that decimal place. Yeah. Saying. Okay. So it's just. I guess it's just the if you round way back, just one decimal place. If we had rounded here, that would have had if. That would hit this number, which then hit yeah. those numbers, which would then hit well all those cards. So rounding would fractions be a better option until you got to as close as you could. From a math point of view, yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but some of us don't have calculators with display fractions, or do it the old-fashioned way. I also, when I was working through it, I, I dropped the number in the middle of it. Uh, I had 4.259, I dropped that too, and so everything wasn't meshing up, and I was thinking, all right, where's my issue there? So many places to make a careless error. Yeah. And I cut somebody off, I think. Oh, I was, you said that you had missed um, a resistor when you were originally making the problem. Where else was there? Uh, I had a resistor in here. Oh. <laughs> So that only the five and six are in parallel, and then that's in series with this one, and then that is in parallel with the four. And it's just, you know, one more thing to deal with. Right. And this is the the lab is you basically set it up, you pick the resistors, you set it up, and then you measure the current going through every each and the potential drop across each. And it works out really nicely. If you do it right, okay. Actually, if you don't do it right, it's a living nightmare. Maybe not that bad. It's not like it's a chemistry class. <laughs> it's the worst bit of information you could have dished out. <laughs> <laughs> As I said in one of the videos, if it's just a bad day for me to harass you with that, just let me know. <laughs> All right, questions before we make it more complicated? This is 
definitely a more complicated problem because we have one set of series resistors, but that's as far as we can simplify it. We cannot simplify it more. So what are the two resistors in series? Uh, not six and two. There's a junction in between them, so they can't be series. And as a side note, if you are faced with something like this on the desk, and I will tell you the last problem on the next test will be something like this. Uh, if you don't see the series, it, it's not going to mess you up. You can, the way the techniques we use to solve it, you know, you'll combine them at some point mathematically, but it doesn't mess you up to not see it right now. However, there are two that are in series here. Remember, series components have the same current running through them. I, I think you said it, Faith. Yes. These are indeed series because any current flowing across here has to flow across there. And by, by the way, this is a really, from a practical point of view, this is a stupid design. This is, primary, this is here for the technique. And Joe's gonna tell us how to solve it. Go. You so. break it, just, do you just divide it? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got three power supplies here, which are messing things up. It's not like we did before when we can just start, other than the one ohm and the six ohm resistor, we can combine those if you want to or not. But the power supplies really mess this up. And so there are basically two different techniques for getting the equations we need. And so let's go through the techniques for getting the equations. Then the second piece of it is the math to solve it. Now, if having done this enough, most likely there'll be three different methods amongst you about how to solve it. That's fine. Some of you will just resort to, they know how to use your calculator, you know how to use your calculator, solve a system of equations. There'll be three equations, three unknowns, or two equations, two unknowns, depending upon uh, how you set it up. If you use a calculator to do it, the downside is if you mistype a number, I will not see where the mistake is. All I'll see is you can start with this and you ended up with garbage. So just be aware of that. The calculator is great, but it does have the downside of I can't see the work. All right, with your hand up? Yeah, so depending on what perspective I mean, you could take it from one side or the other to start with, but does each battery kind of act like a booster? Uh -huh. Or the hindrance, depending on which way the current's flowing. Yeah. So, again, a nonsensical design other than just for the, the technique. The 10 volt battery and the 4 volt battery with no resistor between them, can you, can you not get a 14 volt battery? No, there's a junction here. And going this way, there is resistance. Remember, a resistor affects everything. It doesn't affect just in its local area. So this two here affects the whole thing. If I change that, all the currents would change. Yeah, so what, he, what I'm saying is, so in fact, what he's saying is the 14 volts there, but that in turn is affected by the one ohm resistor with the five volts with the six ohms and the two and the seven. Yeah. Oh, wow. Nice. Okay. Nice. <laughs> All right. So technique number one, we're getting the equations. I have two junctions. So first, identify the junctions. There and there. Between those two junctions, there is current flowing. Pick a direction. It does not matter. So basically, you're doing one current per path. One current per path. I have three paths there, left, center, and right. 
or if I did it in the order in which I said it, left, center, and right, then you just assign a current to them. It does not matter if you get the direction wrong. Some students will look at this and they'll try to figure out which the direction of the current would be if this were actually set up. And just so that all their currents in the end become positive because it, it just psychologically works for them. Others will always choose, I'm going to choose up, left, and right, all going towards the top or towards the bottom. You just, again, it doesn't matter if you just pick. So I've got a current flowing this way. And I'm going to call that I sub A. Matter of fact, I'm just going to call it A, just because I don't like writing those subscripts. In the middle there, why not? I'm just going to choose the direction of the current to be the direction the battery's going. So I got my current B here, which I'm just going to call B when I do my equations, just to avoid writing subscripts. And then on the last one, uh, I'm going to choose going counterclockwise. And I'm going to call this I sub C, or I'll just use the letter C, just again, because I don't like writing subscript. So step number one, just for each path, pick a direction and give it a label. Step two. I can formalize that step one. For each path, take a direction for the current, and label it. If I have picked the wrong direction, then I'm going to get a negative answer, and that just means, oh, it's the other way. You don't have to go back and redo the whole thing if you get a negative. Unlike some of the mechanics problems where you're not quite sure which way friction's going, and if you get a negative, that means, ooh, it went the other way. Second step. I have three unknowns, so I need three equations. One equation is a junction equation. Current in equals current out. The other two equations are voltage loop equations. Now the direction I'm picking right now for my voltage loops is, can be completely independent of my current. I do not have to go in the same direction that my current's flowing in. I do need to account for the direction of my loop versus the current flow, but I don't have to pick the same direction as I'm doing for that. All right, so first the junction equation. Doesn't matter which one I pick. I usually pick the top one for whatever reason. Childhood scars, no, no doubt. I have two currents flowing in, that's A plus C, and I have one current flowing out, that's B. Current in equals current out. One equation down, two to go. Questions up to here before I talk about the voltage loops. For the voltage loops, I got three basic choices. I, uh, there's technically an infinite number of choices if I just like doing figure eights for a while, but there's three basic choices. I got the left side, I've got, oh, I'm sorry, I've got this left loop, I've got the right loop, and then I've got the whole thing. Only two of them. If I did all three, and I did have a student, I still remember her doing it, she came up with three equations, all from the voltage loops, and she got an answer uh, because she made a careless error in there, and that's pretty much the only way. If you do everything correctly, other than the fact that you pick three voltage loops for your three equations, you should ultimately end up with zero equals zero, or something equally as profound, because they are not three independent equations if you're picking all three voltage loops. I can always derive the third one from the first two. All right, so personally, I like to start just before battery and then take that loop. So I'm going to start here, and I'm going to just do the, the left side. 
So I start here, I go across my five volt battery, so I gain five volts. I'm going across the six ohm resistor in the direction of current, so I'm gonna lose potential. So minus six A. I get to here, I work my way down. I'm now going across my seven ohm resistor. I'm going in the direction of the current that I said, so minus seven B. I get to this, I go across my 10 in the direction from negative to positive, so I'm gaining. Then I go across the one ohm resistor, minus six A is equal to, and then back where I started, I better be at zero. Minus 6A from the hand. Sorry. All right, the, the A there is the current label, it's not amperes. So I'm starting here and I'm working my way around. Because when I get back to where I started, I should have zero potential difference. So I gain five going across the battery. I'm going to lose, if I'm going in the direction of current, I lose potential. So it's, again, Ohm's law, delta V is equal to IR. Current times resistance, my current is A. My resistance is six. So 6A, so that's why I lost 6A there. Do you have a second 6A? Should it be 1A? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Was that it? Uh, okay. I apologize. Thank you for being more blatant. And I appreciate you thought I had not made a mistake, or at least didn't accuse me directly, but, you know, <laughs> it would have been okay. So do we, when, when we have our other equation, but we set each one equal to just one um, unknown and solve for the one unknown. Oh, as in once we have the equations, what te math technique do we do? Yeah. And it depends upon you. Okay. Personally, when I'm doing it, I use a hybrid of several different techniques, but just, you know, it's the way my brain's functioning at that moment, the way that it dictates. All right, second equation. Um, I'm going to, well, let's do the whole, whole thing. So I'm going to start here and work through the entire loop. I'm going to start just before the four volt and I'm going to go, I guess that would be counterclockwise. Is only feeling bold enough to tell me what that would be? You start at four. Starting here, going across the four. So you're going to, um, yeah, four, then it's plus, minus two C. Okay. You're going down, so you're going to have seven B. Uh, now I'm just going to do the whole thing. Oh. I wanted to do at least one where I'm going against the current across the resistor. So there's going to be six A. It'll be six A, but what's the sign in front? Well, that's because you're going against against what we define. Yeah. Okay. If you think of if you think of potential as you're riding an escalator up. And then you're getting back down to the bottom through various through a path, and you end up back where you started. If you're going with the current, you're going down to a lower level. If you're going against the current, then it's like you're you're walking up the down escalator. So you gain. So you're subtracting five volts. And you subtract five volts because you're going from the pot the high side to the low side. Then you add the one. And then that puts us back where we start. If we had consolidated six and one early, we recognize that as a series and just combined it as seven, then what would have happened is those two would have been combined. I wouldn't have made that mistake. And those two would have been combined already. So we would have had one fewer term. If you didn't recognize it as series, then at this point, when you combine like terms, it gets combined at that point. In some ways, this is a very forgiving technique. Uh, in other ways, though, one sign in the wrong spot and your answers are all off. And the space shuttle explodes. Sorry, I don't know why I suddenly went more. We have three equations, three unknowns. Now come the techniques. So first, let's combine like terms. Uh, so I've got I got a five and a 10 here, so I got 15 minus seven A minus seven B equals zero. Did I lose one? 
Negative. All right, and the next one, I've got four minus five, so I've got negative one plus seven A minus two C equals zero. So I've got the sevens, I've got four minus five is negative one, and then negative two C, all right. And then I still have A plus C equals B. Joe, what was the technique you were thinking? Canceling out and then using, so if we've got a, so if we've got our equation, like uh, the top one, okay. the 15 minus 7a, use a is equal to b minus c. Okay. And then put, and then that way it would be b and c only. Or you can cancel Okay, it. so basically solve for a and then plug it into the other two. All right, let's do it. So 15 minus seven times b minus c minus seven b equals zero. And negative one plus seven b minus c minus two c equals zero. Now some of this stuff, I, I would imagine all of you could do, skip some of these steps in your head, no problem. There's just too many places that I've seen Carol's mistakes happen that I've made, that I've seen students make. That's why I'm sort of taking it slowly here, but you know, going at the speed that you're feeling comfortable. So this becomes 15 minus seven B plus seven C minus seven B equals zero. And negative one plus seven B minus seven C minus two C equals zero. So I got 15 minus 14B plus 7C equals zero. And negative one plus 7B minus 9C equals zero. And anybody get this without, like just on their own without listening to what I was saying? Is there a Carol's error? That's what I'm going for. Yeah. 